Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And it's Pete J. And we're on the road. Uh, one more trip out before we come home real quick. Like we got, we got a game tomorrow back in Phoenix, but right now we are here in the middle of the country, St. Louis, Missouri, at uh, Lafayette Center playing uh, for one time and one time only this season, another conference team, the Missouri Hot Corners. And I've got the platypi up on the screen, which is an odd, odd thing. Well, that's funny, though. It says that's one of those glitches. And if I go to... If I go here and I look up the, the hot corners... All right, there we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the hot corners. <laughs> and um, what do you think, Pete? Well, um, after they uh, they drop two to the Nemesis, uh, get swept by the last place team in their division, um, the the playoffs have become a long shot at this point. From uh, this point to the end of the season, really, the B Wolves got to be thinking they're playing for pride. So, I'm I'm hoping that uh, we're going to see uh, a new B Wolf team, a more offensive minded team, um, a team that can can hang with some of these other teams in the league, but. Uh, you know, they, they went up against the nemesis and they just got, they got rolled, man. They got Rick rolled over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's been custom of late. The opposing team got, got started right away We're talking about that game. Uh, this time it was no no other than Jock Sports who got it started by placing one in the center field, bringing in the nemesis first run of the game in the bottom of the first. Then the, uh, the B-Wolf showed some spark, though. In the top of the second, Magic Moore. Tags one way out over the wall and right center to keep it locked in one apiece. So it's good to see Magic stepped up. Good to see a little offense. See a little bit of fight because they knew they had to win it. But it, uh, like you said before, it's not going to be enough. Then here's where we settle in. Mark Harbormouth, of all people, gets into the mix with his this outfield blast in the bottom of the second that gets him two bases and an RBI. The pitcher, two bases and an RBI. Yeah. Then in the top... Yeah. You have a double machine over there in the, in uh, Hawaii. They did. We're just cranking them out. <laughs> in the top of the third, Laura Franco punches one out to left center field. It almost makes it over, but it makes it far enough, landing her on second base, bringing in the tying run for the Beebles for the second straight inning. So again, they're fighting back, but Flash Lathar then jams one out in the next inning, getting two more runs from the Nemesis, and the Beebles fall behind yet again. In the bottom of the fifth, then, Jackie Slam jumps on the double train with this home run. That, this home run that comes within a foot of being a home run. I'm sorry. It gets her to second and brings in another one for Hawaii. Then in the bottom of the sixth, Stacy Staples does something we saw in the last game. And that's ground one straight to Gina Torrance, who again can't get the throw home in time. And that's another one for the nemesis. At the top of the seventh, at Bertha Banks, the hottest of the B-Wolves in this trip, Slaps one in the right field to bring in one of the B-Wolves, making it a 6-3 game. She's followed shortly thereafter by Elora Franco, who gets one of her own into center field. Starting what could be a comeback if we were lucky, Steve Monstour then comes up and flies out, but the runner tags up, bringing in the B-Wolves to just one run from a tie. But Jackie Slam strikes back with this outfield single, that brings two more in for the nemesis. And then Jock Sports, of course, ends the debate with a huge three-run home run, putting the game out of reach <clears throat> and vaulting Sports to the top of the home run list for the season. He, he's out of his head. Yeah, he is. He is. He's a dangerous hitter by uh, the same day. Uh, the... the the B-Wolves really have had not, they haven't had a whole lot of problem with Jock Sports. It's not that they've shut them down completely, but they've kept them inside the park, which is startling for somebody who leads the league in home runs. So, um, yeah, but uh, finally the dam broke, and it, it broke at absolutely the wrong time. Hmm. Well, Steve Mons, <clears throat> excuse me, Steve Monster kept at it with this ground out in the top of the ninth that brought in one more for the B-Wolves. But the game's going to end at 11-6. When Benny Balmer grounds to a, grounds out to a diving jock sports, who whips it to first, and the B Wolves drop another, continuing a horrible losing streak, and that's where we are. 
Yeah, yeah, and like you said, it, it's uh, the, just the third quarter of the season. Um, the uh, the B Wolves went uh, two and nine, and so starting the fourth quarter with uh, two more losses, that's you know that puts them at two and eleven over the uh, past uh, fourteen games. That's just that's not going to get it done. Um, the hot corners are coming in here with the same record as the B Wolves, but the B Wolves um, on on account of the. Uh, <laughs> Their losing streak, they're at a negative three run differential, whereas the hot corners are coming with their plus 13. So you got to give the nod, at least on paper, to the hot corners, Tom. Yeah, you do. And looking at them on paper, too, there's some interesting things to see. Uh, this being the only time we've seen them this year, our old friend Kasha Emmon came here from the Overdog. She, she was in the Dogs last season. Had no K season, but since she's come here, she's picked up her game a little bit. Looks like she's upped her batting average from 270 to 274. Uh, she's already got six home runs, so. Uh, we know Kasha. We know what she could do. The A minus ranked shortstop. Um, going down the, the line, they've got some some impressive rookies here. The the B plus ranked Aliyah Price, uh, youngest player on the team at 21, making eight six million a year. Fast as a bullet, 99 speed, 81 power on her hitting. So she's going to be dangerous. She's got a 242 average on the season, and uh, another. She's also leading the team in home runs with eight. Oh boy. Oh yeah, and then uh, Dean Fail, uh, who's who's uh, all rookie, he's got 99 for contact. So uh, nobody wow. tracks the ball like him. He's at 306 on the season. So they got some really tough, some tough. They uh, Johnson Swanson, 111 started his last season with us. You can see there he was uh, he was what was there four for 30, hitting 133 when he left the B Wolves, and he got picked up by the hot corners. Since, since then he's hitting 224, so he's picked it. Picked up his game a little bit. Good to see him do well. But uh, and then Ansel Carus, pitcher, the uh, one of the hottest pitchers in the league right now. Played last season for the Nemesis. Was two and five for the Nemesis. This season he's five and three for the Hot Corners. And his ERA is a two point one six. He's currently ranked the third best player um, in the league right now. Overall, fifty two strikeouts. Yeah, that's crazy. He's having a just a nuts career. Yeah. All right. Well, there's yeah. seven, seven other games we got to tell you about before we get ready for this one. So, uh, Pete, why don't you start us off? The Wild Pigs are out in San Diego visiting the Platypie. All righty. So, the number one Wild Pigs take it on the number two Platypie, and it's Wild Pigs are early taking the lead, and they hold on to win. Eight. The Sandcats go out to visit the Sawteeth in San Jose. Sawteeth crush them 11 to 1. The Outlaws take it on the Herbisaurs, and it's Outlaws early, and they hold on to win at 10 2. Yeah. The Crocs visit the Burners in Hawaii. It's close. But the Crocs jump ahead win at 6-3. Jacks take it on the Philadelphia Freedom. It's back and forth, but the Freedom line up holding on and winning 5-3. Nemesis at the Sirloins, and the Sirloins live up, and they, they win 5-3. Herbisaurs take it on the Gold Coats, and it's Gold Coats 3-1. Wow. So the Herbisaurs dropping two in a row. Yeah, they really helped us out there. They did. All right, Pioneer Conference, Pathfinder Division, what do you see? Pioneer Conference, Pathfinder Division. <laughs> I see the Crocodons. Crocodons <laughs> with a record of 22 and 11, holding on to a half by a half game to first place over the Blowfish, who are sitting uh, with a record of 22 and 12. The best team in the league, which has been so much of the season, the New York Wild Pigs, are 24 and 11. <laughs> They've got a full four-game lead against almost every other team in their division: the Uncharted, the Buzzards, the Outlaws, and the Platypi. All. Uh, Buzzards Outlaws at 19 and 14, Platypie at 20 15. Talk about that run differential, too. A plus 73, the best in the league. Down in the Journey Division, the Grapplers uh, with a record of 18 and 16. They have a one and a half game lead over the second place Sandcats, who are sitting with a record of 17 and 18. There you go. In our Explore Conference of the Seafair Division, the uh, California, California Gold Coats are now in first place. They're 16 and 18. Still, every team in that division a losing record. They have a half game lead against the front runners, the Heaters, and the Jacks, who are all 15 and 18. Yes, sir. Down in our very own trade division, the Sirloins with a deadlock on first place with a record of 22 and 11. They, uh, they have the second best run differential in the league with a plus 70. Uh, followed behind them, uh, three and a half games back, the Water Bullets sit in second place with a record of 19 and 15. Our very own B Wolves with a record of 17 and 18, one game behind. 
500, uh, 500 ball. They're six games out of first place, and like we talked about earlier, they're a negative three run differential right now. So yeah. And then to finish things up, the Curiosity Division, the San Diego Moon Stars, way out ahead. They're twenty two and twelve, uh, and they are five full games ahead of the San Jose Saw Teeth, who are playing five hundred ball at eighteen apiece. And uh, you, what's that? You go, I was gonna say you're gonna look at the uh, the wild card standings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I was gonna check that out real quick. So yeah, we're out of the hunt for the first. We're not gonna get first place. I think. We would have to win every game, and the Surlines would have to lose it. Basically, all the rest of the team. So, wild card standings: Beebles are two and a half games back. Uh, we got the Herbosaurs and the Saw Teeth and the Bullets ahead of us. So, yes. uh, we need those teams to keep losing, and we need to start winning. Yes, and the Blowfish over in the Pioneer Conference have uh, control of the wild card as it stands now, but. Uh, you got the Buzzards, the Outlaws, and the Platypi breathing down their neck only two and a half games back with uh, nine games to play. So uh, still anybody's uh, anybody's ball game as far as the wild card goes. Yeah. All right, and that brings us to today's game. It is the uh, 17 and 18 Beebles against the 17 and 18 Hot Corners. One team's going to end up with a better record than the other today. Uh, the Hot Corners are known as Extreme Contact Specialists. So... We're going to have to hope they hit it in double plays. they got fair power as well, so we're going to be careful pitching to them. Luckily, we got our best on the mound today. It's going to be uh, Hurley Bender's, I think, second-to-last game of the season. Or maybe he, he might he might actually have two more. Uh, the right-hander starter uh, throws the ball hard, puts crazy junk on it, and he's super accurate. He's 3-3 three and three on the season with a 4.76 ERA and a 1.41 whip, so he's going to want to go into the win zone with this one. Definitely, definitely. That's that's it. Right now, you're playing for pride. Um, that wild, as me and Tom said, the wild card uh, berth is a little bit of a stretch, but it's not completely. You can't rule it out. So, all the people's got to do is win. That's all, that's yeah. all you got to do is just keep winning. Um, Alora Franco is going to help with that, and she's going to be playing first base. She's locked in currently. She's got excellent power. She's got very good ability to connect and, and very good speed on the base pass. She's hitting 30, 63 with eight home runs, and she's outperforming her career stats right now by virtue of the uh, being locked in. Henley Dexteris, the superstar shortstop, ha stop, has a little bit better than average power. He's got very good ability to connect, very good speed on the base pass. He's hitting 353 with nine home runs. And then the locked-in Bertha Banks, who's been uh, really kind of a, a bright spot for the offense in the last couple of games. She's got uh, better than average power, uh, better than average ability to connect, and about average speed on the base pass. She's hitting 370 with five home runs, but by virtue of being locked in, she's outperforming her career stats to date. So. Let's hope she can help them out some more today. But to, like I say, she's been a bright spot so far. Yeah, she's been great on this trip. Uh, they're going. They're going to go up against the uh, the Tarak Smith, the starting pitcher, the right-hander for the the Hot Corners, who unfortunately for Tarak is is a little bit tense recently. And because of that, he's not throwing the ball all too hard. He doesn't really put much movement on it at all, and he's lost some accuracy, which was his, his biggest point. He's 0-2 on the season with a 5.30 ERA and a 1.46 whip, so the hot corner is going to need to see him really turn it around if they want to win. And Tarak Smith has been on, on the hot corner since this season started. Yes. And yet he's only 0-2. That means, I mean, how, I mean, how many no. games has he pitched where he's got no decision? Right, yeah. Um, backing up uh, Smith will be uh, Belter in right field. He's got excellent power. He's got very good ability to connect and, and good speed. He's hitting 238 with uh, five home runs, jumps at second base with good power, excellent ability to connect, and about average speed. He's hitting two, two home runs. And then Dirk Sportswood, the first baseman, he's got the good power, excellent ability to connect, but he's got less than average speed on the base pass, so he's hitting 276 with six home runs. So you got the 13 home runs right there for the uh, hot corners. That's a lot. That's a lot of hot. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> well, they're going to be giving us the starting lineup. It looks a little bit something like this. Hanley Dexter is going to start things off and play shortstop batting first. Batting second is going to be his good friend, Buster Biggs, played out in left field. Bat number third, up one slot from usual. It's first base, Laura Franco, who's also locked in, as Pete mentioned. We're going to have a uh, cleanup bat, a different person today, Ruby Green, because we're pay playing in the other conference, other building. So she's going to play DH today. Ruby will just hit the ball. And she'll be at fourth batting fifth. The locked-in Bertha Banks, she'll be playing third base. Behind the plate, we're going to have Steve Monstour, 
who's hoping to establish reestablish himself toward the end of the season if he wants to keep that salary. <laughs> and he'll be betting yeah. six. Freddie Knox will be playing second base in place of Gina Torrance, who's a little tense recently. So uh, Freddie's going to get the nod. That's one position where we have uh, just as strong a backup as we do a starter. Um, Billy the Point then is going to come out and play in right field as he normally does, because who else is going to play in right field? And uh, batting ninth, Magic Moore, he'll play in center field. That's going to leave uh, starting pitcher Huli Bender, who is just going to throw today. And he's going to throw the forefinger, the two-finger, the cut finger, the curveball, and the slider. And we're looking forward to Hurley getting a better, better form so we can win one to get back up to 500, Pete. Yes, sir. Like I could say that's that's all we can do right now. It's just uh, keep uh, keep winning, get ball games, and uh, and it's been hard, like you said, uh, against the nemesis. Every time we would score and start to come back, that the very next, uh, you know, the the other side of the inning, the the nemesis would just come roaring right back, and that's what the the, the Beavers have to work on is uh, trying to you know stop the bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing you start craw- clawing your way back, but you got to stop them from scoring. So the hot corners have failed at designated hitting. Sportsman at first base jumps at second. Belter in right field, Holmes in left. Price at third base, Emmon at shortstop. And with DeGron in catching and James in center field. So as the hot corners take the field, we're going to take a look at Handy Dexterous and Buster Biggs and Alora Franco. They're going to get pick up a bat and take a first look at Tarak Smith. Nice dusk. Evening here, sun going down in St. Louis. Hanley Dexter is known as a tough out utility player, hitting 353, nine home runs, 22 RBIs on the season. The first pitch from Smith is crushed, and that's going to get into the gap, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. And Hanley Dexter is led off with a double. All right, way to get the offense. First pitch double, quick. way to go. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to bring up Buster Biggs. Yeah, uh, uh, Dexter's punished him down the middle. Buster Biggs hitting 290. He's got a fast runner first. First means misses inside ball. One over the count. The pressure up already here at the top of first. There's a hard hit. That's into the corner. And right field, that's going to be extra base. Oh, no. Oh, Buster Biggs is going to come back. Oh, and Handley's coming back. They mixed they mixed the calls up. The first and, uh, that's all right. Both Runners at first and third with no outs. Alora Franco steps in. Franco hitting 363 with eight home runs. And already Smith showing some wear. <laughs> first pitch to... Uh, Franco is fouled off. Strike one. That one's outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike with no outs. Oh. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Strike two. One ball, two strikes to Allura. Franco, that's inside. And, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Trying to steal. He got caught. Oh, and the strike out. Two quick three. outs. With a runner at third base. And they went from runners at first and third with nobody out. And now you got a runner at third with two outs. Oh, that's ugly. That's real ugly. Well, first one high and inside. Good patience there by the DH. Ruby Green, who hasn't played in a little while. It'll be good to see her get out there. She's looking good, waiting for that good pitch in there. Push her still up. Another floater, but she swings. And now we're at 2-1 and one the count with two outs in the top of the first. That one's in there for a strike. Now we're knotted up at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. That one floats a little high, and she pops up, and they're going to get out of that side without any runs, Pete. Jeez, oh, Pete, that was horrible. Jeez, oh, Pete, that was horrible. <laughs> so we're heading down into the bottom of the first. Dean fails. Dirk Sportswood and Jeb Jump's going to face off against Bender with his 4.76 ERA. See, that's the type of stuff that's been killing the mm-hmm. B-Wolves. You lead off with a double. You get a, a single to back that up, and then you just run yourself out of an inning. The rookie fail comes up, 26-year-old rookie who's, like we said, is a real solid contact hitter. Just gonna figure out what to throw to him. Hit hard down the line. Bertha Banks dives at it and is able to stop it, but not quite clean it up. And that's gonna land in there for a single. One hit, one single for the hot corners. That brings up Dirk Sportswood now. He's in 276 with six home runs on the season, 19 RBIs. The fail at first. Hoping for that double play ball. And they're waiting for the signal from Master. He gets it, throws. Oh, there's a liner way out in the left. Left field, it gets past Buster Biggs. And he's going to have to throw in. And here comes the runner for home. And they score. <clears throat> Once again. Top of the two inning. Pitches, two, two pitches. Two pitches, two hits, and one a run. run. Yep. Jumps. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and they got a runner at third, still no outs. And a solid power a contact hitter. 
And Jed jumps. The outfield's going deep. That one makes it in for a strike. We're even at one apiece. Fans on their feet. Something to cheer about here in St. Louis. That one pushed into the Beagles' dugout. One and two. Bender's ahead of him with a count. Bender hoping not to get tense. Little roller to Bertha Banks. She's going to have to throw to first because she's never going to get that runner in time. To get that first out. Now they got two. Because every time they go home with that one, they end up missing and everyone's safe. <laughs> and now you got Bo Belter. Takes the first one there for a strike. Off the going deep for Bo. That's a 2 nothing hot corners lead at the bottom of the first. Unbelievable. Yeah, 1-1-1 one, one, and one now to Belter. That one missed outside. Better throws that one inside. Push, they hits that in his own dog out of the first base line. Foul. 1-2 the count. Swing and a miss. Strike three. It's good to see... Got K in there, but maybe a little late. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely must have had the nerves when he first came out because, he, yeah, he was not he was not fooling anybody with those first two pitches. First one misses the ball from Nora Holmes. He's hitting 232, four home runs, and 22 RBIs on the season. Uh, that one's hit foul ball, third base line. Bender with a dozen pitches behind him. Throws lucky 13, misses low. Ball two and one the count to Nora Holmes. Swing and a miss, strike two. We're at 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Here, Bender hoping to put her away. Break, nice breaking pitch, but she gets a piece, fouls it off. Still, two balls, two strikes. There it is on the inside corner. Two Ks by Bender and that hit to end the side. All right, well, the B-Wolves opened up with two hits, but no runs. Hot Corners opened up with two runs and two hits. So, Bertha Banks, Steve Montstore, and Freddie Knox going to face Tarak Smith, who threw 13 pitches, had a strikeout, gave up two hits. ZRA's at 5.15. Bertha Banks is locked in and fit in 375 home runs, 17 RBIs on the season. Smith up to 13 pitches. First pitch to Bertha Banks is fouled off straight back. Strike one. Oh. That's lifted to first baseman Sportswood. Bertha Banks is out. One down. <clears throat> Two pitches, one out. Steve Monstour looking good on power. Breaking pitch misses inside. Good patience. One look out to Steve. That one comes ready for a strike. We're even at one piece. With one out. Swings at a high pitch. Fouls it off. One and two the count. As well. Oh, but it makes it nope. in and he strikes yep. out. Oh. Yep. God dang damn it. <laughs> Freddie Knox, the second baseman, is neutral and fit. Hitting 328, a home run, eight RBIs, two outs, nobody on top of the second. Hot corners, two, B wolves, nothing. Sure. That's a flying drive to Jay Jumps, the second baseman, will pull it out of the air for the third out. So we're heading to the bottom of the second. Still the same score, hot corners, two, B wolves, nothing. A lot. Ah, Aliyah Pierce, Kasha Emin, and Tony Tiny DeGrand going to face Bender with through 16 pitches with two strikeouts, give up two hits in the first third inning. Third I'm going to listen to that. She does. Then I gotta say, Aaliyah, Aaliyah <laughs> Price, Aaliyah Price, the third baseman. This is that rookie oh, sensation that major that Tom lag. talked about. That's fouled off uh, into the first base stand, so no balls, one strike. That's a roller foul along the first base uh, first baseline. So Price now in the hole, no balls, two strikes with no outs. She has a roller. Franco's going to pick it up and flip it to <laughs> Bender for the first out. And Aliyah Price is down 0 for 1. Kasha Emin, the shortstop, hitting 274, six home runs, 13 out of As Tom said, a dangerous, dangerous offensive player, Kasha Emin. First pitch is low, ball one. One ball, no strikes with one out. Base is empty for Emin, who's playing shortstop for the hot corners. Fouled straight back. One ball, one strike. Emin. Kind of a journeyman around the league. She, uh, like like Tom said, we we had her over at the Overdogs. She follows that one straight back. So now she's behind in the count. One ball, two strikes, with one out. Bender delivers outside. The count is even. Two balls, two strikes, with one out. Bender's throwing his 24th pitch. That's pounded into straightaway center field, and it's going to be off the wall. Magic Moore went for the jump. That's going to wind up being a triple. Oh. Oh, so where it is, the nemesis were pounding doubles. The hot quarters are pounding triples. <laughs> Tiny DeGron, the catcher. He's neutral and fit, hitting 244. Two home runs, six RBIs, one out. Kasha Emin at third base. Bender steps off, makes the throw to Banks, but Emin was able to get back in time. So 
That one's outside, and DeGrand anticipated that outside pitch, that curve. Of course he did. There's a smash, and oh, that's going to get past Freddie Knox into center field, and the score is now three to nothing. Wow. I just, just can't get any worse. Geronimo James, the center fielder, favors the outside pitch. He hits 318, no home runs, 12 RBIs. Runner at first base, one out. That one's fouled straight back. No balls, one strike. That's a little ball one. Count is evened up. One ball, one strike with one out. Slow runner at first base. That's fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes now with one out. And Geronimo James behind in the count. There's a roller to Knox. He's going to pick it up. Flip it. Dexter is over to first for a double play. And we're out of the inning. But the uh, hot corners pick up another one. So it's B-Wolves nothing. Hot corners three. Billy LeBoink, Magic Moore, and Hanley Dexter is going to face Smith, who's thrown 20 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up two hits. Smith, who is struggling. It's <laughs> tense coming out here. He's looking so, so far so good. Billy LeBoink hitting 378, two home runs, 24 RBIs. Yeah, Billy LeBoink having a good season. Takes the first one, ball low. Good, good eye there, Billy. Second one's outside. Corey oh, no. pushes it right into the goal of Sportswood for that first out. Magic Moore, the center fielder, hitting 314. Nine home runs, 24 RBIs. One out, base is empty. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's high ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. There's a smash into straightaway center field. And James is able to get under it and make the catch for the second out. So two down now, and Haley Vexter is stepping into the box. Still looking for that first real offense from the B Wolves. Only Dexter smashes one to right center to right field. That's going back. That's good far enough. Waving it off. Over the wall. Just over the jumping right fielder. Oh, Hanley finally gets us on the board, Pete, with one that barely makes it out. 346 feet. It's his 10th home run, though. And 23rd RBI of the season. A pop fly home run. Buster <laughs> brings the left fielder one for one with a single. And now it's 3 1 hot corners in the top of the third. There's a smash. That's going to get to Emma at shortstop. She'll pick it up, make the throw to first for the third out. So the B Wolves pick up a hit and a run, making it th uh, hot corners three. B Wolves one. Dean Fala, one for one. Dirk Sportswood, one for one with a triple. And Jeb jumps 0 for one. Bender at 30 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up four hits. The ZRA's at 5.06. Dean Fail, one for one with that single earlier on. Now hitting 313. Hoping to add to the hot corners lead. First one's in for a strike. Oh on the oh on the count. Fail a solid hitter. Last time he hit a grounder that um, that Delora Franco was able to stop but couldn't quite feel it. That one this is for a ball where we even a one apiece. Third pitch by Benner, swinging a miss on a nice looking cut finger or two finger, split finger outside. One and two now. Nice breaking pitch, swing and a miss. And it's another good K for Bender, who's hot and cold today. Yeah, hopefully he can, he can get the motor running here. It's with another, another great contact hitter. It's a liner straight, and we'll have a Bertha Banks at third base for that second out. Playing catch with her. Now that brings in Jed Jumps, who's 0 for 1. Got an RBI, knows a stealer if he gets on. So Bender wants to put him away. Swing and a miss, strike one. A nice split finger outside corner. Even the fans like the look of that pitch. They're swinging a miss, strike two, high and inside. And 0 and 2, Bender's got ahead of him in the count. Bender looking solid all of a sudden. Hoping to get out of another 40 pitches. Fouls that one off behind the plate. We're at uh, 0 and 2 still. Pitch number 39. Breaking pitch fouled off. And if he wants to get out on 40, he's going to do it right here. Gets a signal from Monstour. Nods, winds up the throw off his hands. Another foul ball, first base line. He's making him pitch. Making him pitch. No. Nope. Hard hit foul ball, third base line. And it's batting practice for Jeb Jumps. Low it away to Freddie Knox, who dives, gets up, throws it to first. What a fielding play by Freddie Knox. Gets that out. Way to go. Way to go, Freddie. So as we head into the top of the fourth, Alora Franco 0 for 1 to strike out. Ruby Green 0 for 1. Bertha Banks 0 for 1. Smith at 27 pitches with two strikeouts, giving up three hits. 
It's uh, Hot Corners three runs on four hits. Bewell's one run on three hits. Allura Franco, the first baseman's 0 for 1 today. Hitting 360, though, on the season. Well, if we could do it with the long ball, Laura could do it. This pitch floats way up high. Good eye there by Laura. 1 0 the count. So the pitch is on oh, outside corner. No. She hits it. It's Oh, Kasha Emma gets it shortstop. She's not going to get it in time. And she is safe. Way to run it out, Alora. Good single to start off with. Yes, sir. So Alora Franco at first base. Ruby Green, 0 for 1 today, but she's known as an RBI man. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. Throw over to first, but Franco's back. So uh, no balls, one strike with no outs. That one's low, ball one. One ball, one strike with no outs. Throw over, and Franco's back. One and one. That's one's outside, ball two. Two and one now to Ruby Green. That's in there for called second strike. Two balls, two strikes with no outs. That smash, that's going to be caught by Geronimo James in center field. And Laura Franklin will have to get back to first. Unfortunately, it wasn't deep enough to tag up, but uh, Laura Franco at first was one out. Got him throwing, though. Bertha Banks now for one. Drock Smith up to a 35th pitch now coming here. First one's high and inside. Good patience. Good ball there. There goes Franco for first. Outside throw is not going to be in time. She's safe. Nice stolen base by Laura Franco. Now in scoring position. Outfield single by Bertha Banks brings her in. Nice high pitch. 3-0. and oh. Bertha Banks has just watched the rest of this. And he pitches, walks her four pitches, Pete. Yes, he did. He stayed away from her. So now runners at first and second with one out. Steve Monstewer, neutral fit. Power versus right-handed pitcher, but he's 0 for 1 today. First pitch is fouled off into the dugout along the first baseline. That one's low, so the count is gone even. One ball, one strike with one out. That's a roller to Kasha Emin over at the uh, shortstop. She flips it to second to get one, but she does the, they cannot get two, so it's runners at first and third now with two outs. This, this is where the Beagles got to convert, though. They got two outs. Here. Freddie Knox, a good, solid hitter, though. Nice. There he hits a hard one down the line, and it's just oh. foul, unfortunately. Oh, on the count. Clark Smith throws his 43rd pitch. It's a floater. Good patience there. That's a ball. One apiece. Right in there for a strike, and now we're at one and two. Top of the fourth, three one. Hot corners. That one's right in there. He fouls it into his own dugout, though. Defensive swing, one and two. High and inside, another good patience there. 2-2-2 two, two, two to Freddie Knox. That one's in the zone. That's right in the center field. And that's going to be picked up for a clean single and another run. Great single by Freddie Knox. We need to convert on the RBI. Yes, sir. So we get one, another one across the plate, making it 3-2. Billy LeBoink, 0 for 1 today, favors the high pitch. Runners at first and second now with two outs in the top of the fourth. LeBoink hits that one to Kasha and She'll take it and make the throw to first for the third out. So... But the B-Wolves pick up another one. It's B-Wolves, two runs on five hits. Hot Corners, three runs on four hits. Bo ba Belter, Nora Holmes, and Ali Ali Aliyah Pierce coming up against Bender, who's thrown 42 pitches with three strikeouts, giving up four hits. <laughs> Bo Belter, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. He's 0 for 1 today, hitting 236 on the season. First pitch to Belter's in there for called strike. Strike one. Allen's in there for called second strike, and now Belters finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with no outs. Nobody on base at the top, the bottom of the fourth. Just gets enough of that to push that foul along the first baseline out of play. Finds himself another pitch. Allen's inside, ball one. Belter had a hard time holding off on that one, but he was able to. One ball, two strikes. Allen's outside, and the count is gone. Even now, two balls and two strikes. Belter making. Bender pitch. There's a roller to Franco. He'll pick it up. Step on first for the first out. So one down. And Nora Holmes, the shortstop, stepping in. She's 0 for 1 today. Nora Holmes, the shortstop. She's got to be. What? She's playing left field. Okay, that's what threw me. Nora Holmes playing left field. She fouls that one off. No balls, one strike, one out. That's in there for called second strike. And now Holmes finds herself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with an out. Bases are empty for home. There's a roller that Dexteros will pick up, make the throw to Franco for the second out. So two quick outs, and a, Aaliyah Price steps in, third baseman. She's 0 for 1 today. 
Tommy talked about Price at the top of the game there. She's kind of the hot prospect here for the hot corners. Takes the first pitch a little ball one. Bender now at 52 pitches in the bottom of the fourth. There's a roller to Banks. He'll pick it up. Make the throw to first. Three down. So the B-Wolves are able to put a cap on the hot corners for two, two innings in a row now. We're going to head into the top of the fifth. It's still 3-2 hot corners. Magic Moore 0 for 1. Hanley Dexter is 2 for 2 with a home run and a double. Buster Biggs 1 for 2. Smith at 48 pitches with two strikeouts. Magic Moore the center fielders. Neutral and fit. 0 for 1 today hitting 311 on the season. Magic Moore hoping to go 1 for 1 or 1 for 2. So it fouls that one back off the net. Ball one account. That one inside corner strike oh. two. Quickly Smith's ahead in the count. That one misses outside. Good patience there. When you're 0-2, it's tough to do intense. Right in there. Fouls it back behind the plate. We're still at one and two. A low one. Wow, right past the shoulder of Trox within the center field. That's gonna be a single, and Magic Moore makes it on. All right, so we got a base runner with nobody out, and Hanley Dexter is stepping in. He's locked in and fit. Homer his last time up. He's two for two with a home run and a double and an RBI. Runner at first base with some speed. Throw over to first, but the runner's able to get back. Smith delivers the ball to Dexter's low. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. And he's off with the pitch, and, the, and he's still out. Him. <laughs> oh, my God. How can I? All right. That's the second Two draw. balls and a strike with one out. Yeah, I can't, I can't seem to steal a base. Three balls and no one strike. Uh, it's in there for a second. The uh, count is full now. Three balls, two strikes with one out. There's a smash, and that's going to be caught by jumps at second base for the second out. Again, run yourself out of an offensive opportunity. <laughs> Buster Biggs, one for two. That's their that's their plan, man. Get one on, get them right back on the bench. The first one misses outside. Uh -huh. Ball one to Buster Biggs. That one's in there, hit hard straight to Kasha. I mean, he's going to make the easy throw first. Get him out. I don't know why I can't steal bases, but <laughs> Kasha Emmon, Tiny DeGrand, and Geronimo James all coming up in the bottom of the fifth. Score is still 3-2, hot corners. Bender at 53 pitches with three strikeouts, giving up four hits. Now batting, short <laughs> uh, our old friend Kasha, Kasha Emmon, who's one for one with a triple. So uh, Bender wants to get around her here. He's got 53 pitches under his belt, just throws 54. It's a nice breaking pitch in there for a strike and one of the count. Safety's off for Kosh Ammon. The shortstop for the hot corners. That one sails up and away, misses ball one and one. Bottom of the fifth, three, two hot corners. Check swing, but it's a strike. Another breaking pitch by Bender. One and two. She swings on that low inside pitch, fouls it off behind the plate. We're still one and two. Some Beebles fans made the trip here today. Swing of a strike three, and Bender gets that nice one. Just gives the... The approving nod, and here comes Tiny De Grande. He's one for one with a single in RBI. The not, it's a, his name. His nickname is False. Tiny is nothing but Tiny. Number 22 in the right-hand batter's box. Swinging the hips, ready to belt one. Wow, gets that one just up near the face. Hit a dive out of the way. Better then comes low and away on that second one, but misses. That's two quick balls to Tiny De Grande, who's locked in. Swing and a miss on a home run swing there. We missed it. Now it's two and one with one out. There's a hit over the head of, oh, a jumping um, Laura Franco, but it goes foul. Two and two now to DeGrom. Low and away, he doesn't chase. A good pitch by Bender. Now we got a full count. Three and two. Breaking pitch makes it. Oh, oh. just misses it. Oh, and DeGrom gets the, gets the free base. And now it's Geronimo James' turn. He's 0 for 1, looking a little bit tense. He's got a slow runner at first base, likes his pitches outside. Normally a pretty good contact hitter. Hoping for that double play, but it's going to have to be Magic Moore in center field makes the catch. He's going to toss it into first, or second, I'm sorry, to hold him up. Two outs. Brings the DHD to fail the rookie, 1 for 2 with a single. 310 pressure up here. We need just one more out. Breaking pitch misses low. One no the count to Dean Fail. That one's hit hard to Hanley Dexterous. He's going to pick it up, make the throw over to first, and then that side. 
All right, so we're heading into the top of the sixth. It's uh, B Wolves two runs on six hits, Hot Corners three runs on four hits, Alora Franco one for two in a strikeout, Ruby Green 0 for two, and Bertha Banks 0 for one with a walk. Brock Smith at 61 pitches with two strikeouts. Franco's locked in and pit one for two with a single today. They can get right back in this, Pete. Yeah, they can. They just got to keep the pressure up on offensively, quit uh, running themselves out of offensive opportunities. <laughs> Two quick balls against Franco, 2-0. Oh. No. Franco popped that one in, up into center field. Geronimo James is there calling everybody off, makes the catch for the first out. So one down with probably, the bases empty. Probably shouldn't have swung at that. It was a little bit high. Three, it was three, would have been three balls. Ruby Green comes up the uh, DH, who's 0 for 2. That one, nope. she swings a little bit late, fouls it off on one of the count to Ruby. That one sails high, almost the same spot. That time it's a ball, one apiece. Owens outside corner hit hard. Oh, and oh, jumping oh, Elijah oh. Price, the star rookie, grabs that one. Bobbed her. Bertha Banks, the third baseman, locked in and fit. Two outs. Base is empty for Bertha. First pitch is high. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. That's in there for a called strike. It's kind of floated that one in there. That's going to get down fair. That's going to get into the corner, and she's coming around. She's chugging for a second. She's going to pull in yeah. with a double. So Bertha Banks doing what she can at the plate. All right, now Steve for Sturo, Steve on Sturo for two. Oh, and there goes Tarak Smith. They've had it. They're going to bring in Joseph Brosif, the reliever. 3-5, three, 3 ERA with a 1-3-5 whip, 34 strikeouts on the year. Throws the ball really hard. Puts good junk on it, and he's accurate. Uh, he's pitched recently, so he's not 100% gassed. Um, he throws a forefinger of the two-finger, and he also mixes it up with the slider. So the pressure up here to Steve Monstoro. If we can get an outfield single, can tie this game up. There's that breaking pitch. Makes it in there, swinging a miss. Strike one to Steve Monstoro. That one high and inside. No one's swinging at that, and we're even at one apiece. Outside corner, Steve Monsoor hits it deep to left field. It's going back, back, out of here, Pete. Way to, way to come back, Steve Monsoor, who shows up by belting a line drive home run 386 feet. It's his fifth home run and 15th RBI of the season, and that gives the Beagles a comfortable two-run lead. Yes, sir, Freddie Knox, one for two with a single and an RBI. Base is empty now with two outs in the top of the six. It's a one-run lead, Beagles four, hot corners three. There's a line drive that jumps will make the catch for the third out. So as we head into the bottom of the sixth, B-Wolves four runs on eight hits. Hot Corners three runs on four hits. Dirk Sportswood one for two with a triple. Jeb jumps 0 for two. And Bo Belter 0 for two with a strikeout. Bender at 67 pitches with four strikeouts. A walk and giving up four hits. Dirk, Dirk Sportswood the first baseman. Neutral and pit one for two with a triple and an RBI today. Bender delivers his 68th pitch. It's hit foul along the third baseline, out of play. No balls, one strike to Sportswood, the first baseman. That's fouled straight back. And now Sportswood is in the hole. No balls, two strikes with no outs. That's a little inside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Bender at 70 pitches now, making delivering his 71st. Swing and a miss, and Belter goes down on strikes. Way to go, Bender. That's five now, I believe. Jump jumps. Jed jumps. The second baseman comes up. Known as a stealer. He's 0 for 2, I believe, today. First pitch is outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. One out. Base is empty for jumps. That's fouled back. Evens the count up at one and one. Jumps playing second base for the hot corners. That one's high. Ball two. Two balls and a strike with one out. That's in it for called second strike, and the count is even now. Two and two. Bender delivers. Inside. Count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes with an out. Bender is locked in and fit. Throwing his 77th pitch. There's a crush. And that's Bertha Banks laying out. She'll pick it up, make the throw across the field to get. Jed jumps at first base. There's two down. Bo Belter, the center fielder, is 0 for 2 today. He's hitting 234 with five home runs. Two down now. Base is empty for Belter. First pitch is fouled off into the dugout along the first baseline. So no balls, one strike with two outs. 
That's in it for called second strike, and now Belter's in the hole. No balls, two strikes. Belter playing right field for the hot corners. Bender throwing his 80th pitch. Belter's able to foul that one straight back. So no balls, two strikes. Belter will get another pitch. That's fouled off as well. Belter forcing Bender to throw some pitches. He's up to 81. May got to deliver his 82nd here. That's hit foul as well. So <laughs> Belter again protecting the plate, just getting enough. That's slow ball one. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Bender delivers. There's a crush that's going to get to Ben. Uh, Dexterous will pick it up, make the throw across to Franco for the third out. So, one, two, three. We're heading to the top of the seventh. Billy LeBoink, Magic Moore, Hanley Dexter is going to face Joseph Brosif, who's thrown four pitches. LeBoink, 0 for 2, more 1 for 2. Hanley Dexter is 2 for 3 with a home run and a double. Joseph Brosif got a handle on things so far. Billy LeBoink, the right fielder, favors the high pitch. He's 0 for 2 today. Hmm, that's unusual. Outside corner strike one. Ooh, it in there. I don't buy Brosef, that. Brosif, the tense Brosif. That one's low for ball. Now we're even at one apiece. He's coming quick at yep. him. Reaches for that outside pitch. Fouls it. One and two to count now behind. That one's high and inside. Good patience. Two apiece. Billy the one. That was way up high. Full count. Good patience by Billy. Good patience. Hard hit line drive left center field. And it's out of here. First throw back. Another line drive home run. Beeble's adding to it, Pete. That's Billy LeBoink's 363-foot home run. It's his third and 25th RBI of the season. That was easy to say. <laughs> Magic Moore, the center field, is neutral and fit. He's got good connection versus left-handed pitching. He's one for two with a single. I may not be able to steal bases, but I can hit the ball. It's, it's going to fly ball in the center field and Magic Moore will pull in the first with a clean single so a runner at first base with nobody out and Hanley Dexterra stepping into the box. This looks good so far here Pete. Hanley Dexterra is two for three with a home run and a double. And he's got a pretty quick runner at first base as well. High and inside misses ball one to Hanley. Goes to first. He's in the dirt. Magic Moore comes back makes it. That pitch also high ball two, two and oh. It's a little cautious throwing a handling. That one right in there hit hard line drive to left center field and it's off the wall. Hanley's gonna come race around from second and landed there with a double. And now you got runners to second and still no outs, Pete. Yes, sir, and Buster Biggs stepping in. He's one for three with a single. Biggs neutral and fit. Mm. Joseph Brosif is gonna take a seat and they're gonna bring in Amazo Hayes. Amazo Hayes, the relief pitcher's uh got a 4.46 ERA, a 1.46 whip. He's got 24 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He does not have a, a he's got less than average velocity, but he's got uh, excellent junk. Um, he's got a little bit less than average accuracy. He's fully rested, known around the league as a K-man. He throws a four-seam fastball, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. So Buster Biggs facing off against the Amazo Hayes, swing and a miss at the first pitch. No balls, one strike with no outs. There's a roller that's going to go to Jumps, who's going to make the throw to first and get uh, Dexteras, who was off with the pitch. So runners at first and third now with one out. Alora Franco, one for three with a single. Yeah, the infield playing in as they were on that last one, looking for that bunt. But she hits it deep to center field. It's going back, and it's off the wall. Laura Franco stops at second, but the runner comes in. Pete is now seven to three. Beaver. Yes, sir. And here comes Ruby Green, the designated hitter, known as an RBI man. She's 0 for three today. Franco standing at second base with one out. Oops. Has a line drive to catch him, and she'll pick it up, make the throw to first to get Ruby Green. But uh, Laura Franco is able to advance the third. Bertha Banks now one for two with a double and a walk. The locked in Bertha Banks. Got a runner 90 feet from home base. Taking a lead off. Pitches that one outside. Wouldn't know the count. It looks like they're going to throw around Bertha Banks. The locked in Bertha. Maybe not a bad idea. And uh, Mazo Hayes has got to hate that. The K man has got to give a base away. Well, yeah. Bertha hates it too. She's locked in. She wants She wants to get some, some swings, man. Steve Montstewer, the catcher, is one for three with a home run. 
Um, he's got good power versus right-handed pitching. Runners now at first and third. There's a smash. That'll get up into center field. Geronimo James picks it up, gets it into the infield quickly. B will score another one. They'll make it an eight to three, and Freddie Knox stepping in. Boy, that one backfired. <laughs> it comes Freddie Knox yeah. through the single at RBI, and this game's getting away from the hot corners. Just what the Beavles needed. Swings at an outside pitch there. That's going to get to Evans. Going to pick it up, throw it to first, and finally in that side. Yes, sir, but the Beavles put four on the board, making it 8 3. Beavles out hitting the Hot Corners 13 to 4. Nora Holmes 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Aliyah Pierce 0 for 2, and Kasha Emmett 1 for 2 with a triple and a strikeout. Bender at 84 pitches with five strikeouts. Bender may be getting close here, getting pulled. Home's 0 for 2. At least look at gas in the tank. Bender can go a long way. Maybe we get him yeah, through through this inning and then bring in uh, the closer. Swings, hits that one foul. Does Nora Holmes. 0 1 the count. Hits that one almost the same spot off the net. 0 and 2. Bender's ahead. Let's see if we can put her away. Ooh, she does not chase outside, but a good pitch selection. And we're at 1 and 2. Ooh, check swing at one that almost hit her hands. We're not out of a two apiece here at the, the bottom of the seventh. Eight three wheels. It's a little lower to Dexterous. He's going to pick it up, make the soft throw over to first. He gets Holmes for that first out. That brings in the rookie, Aliyah Price. He's over for two, 238. She made a great jump and catch in the field before off a uh, Laura Franco liner. Oh, and she hits that one deep to center field. It's going back, and that's going to be a, a memory piece. Upper deck home run. Or middle deck, mezzanine deck. That's uh, the the 21 year old hit that 422. That's her ninth home run and 24th RBI of the season, and she gives one more for the hot corners. Brings our friend Kasha Emmett, who's one for two with a triple. Then her spits to get the taste out of his mouth from that last one. Winds up, throws it. Gets a little runner to Bertha Banks, who dives and hits it out. And then has to throw it over to second to hold her up. That's a single. It's a good stop by Bertha Banks, but she couldn't quite pull it in. Tiny De Grande now one for one with a single to walk. He's got a fast runner at first base. One out. Beagle's hoping for that double play grounder. Pops that one back off the netting. Foul. Oh, one the count to grunt. Another foul. Oh, and two, but this is where the problems happen. Traditionally. Swinging him a strike three. Way to get away from that. And the next is another K. A good day. That brings in the tense. Geronimo James 0 for 2. But what are the chances he goes 0 for 3? It's a good contact hitter. We need just one more out, do the Beatles. Inside corner strike one. He got his fast runner at first base. Swings low and away. That one's going to roll out. Bender runs over, throws it, and can't get him in time. Can't, that was like a, a swinging bunt down the third base line. It would have been a perfect bunt, actually. That brings a deep fail who's one for three. They got runners at first and second. Pressure up. Two outs. Top at the bottom of the seventh. That one hits straight to Freddie Knox. He's gonna make an easy throw to first. Almost almost got it before Franco's ready for it. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we're getting into the uh, top of the eighth. It's Buell's eight, Hockler's four. Billy the Boink, one for three with a home run. Magic Moore, two for three. And Hanley Dexterous, three for four with a home run and two doubles. Hayes oh, throwed ten right pitches. Holder. In a inning in a third work, Billy LeBoy one for three with a home run and an RBI favors the high pitch. First pitch for Hayes is fouled off along the third baseline in the dugout. That one's outside. One ball, one strike. There's a smash to Sportswood. will pick it up, make the run over to first to retire uh, LeBoy. One down, Magic Moore steps in. He's two for three. With two singles. Great, great day for Magic Moore. His, his average is up to 323 right now. First pitch outside. Swings a little bit late. Fouls it off. 0-1. That one's already there. He swings late again. 0-2s. Going up against K-Man in the maze of A's. With crazy ah. movement. And he strikes it on three <laughs> pitches. <laughs> the second one was, uh, was a twitch. Hilly <laughs> next yeah. stairs is a Three for four. A home run. Two doubles and an RBI. Um, two outs. Base is empty. First pitch from Hayes is in there for called strike. Strike one. That's a smash. That's going deep in the left center field. That's gone, Tom. Yes. yes. And the next is with two home runs on the day. <laughs> and it looks like the home run ball is back, Tommy. 406 feet. Haley Dexterous hit that one. 
That's his 11th home run, 24th RBI of the season. There was no doubt about that one. The first one just kind of eked over, but that one got over. <laughs> yeah, it did. And the one for four, Buster Biggs. Not doing that great. He's still hitting 289. Oh, that one goes outside in and misses. Ball one. One really got way up high. Ball two. Mazo's looking a little tense now. A hard hit by, by Buster Biggs. Deep to left field. That's going back. That's going to be gone, Pete. Into the bullpen again. That, that ball's near Handley's. Back-to-back -back home runs. It's been a long time since we've seen that from Buster Biggs. It's his fifth home run and 20th RBI of the season. This one's gotten away from the hot corners. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Alora Franco, the first baseman's locked in and fits. She's two for four, a double, a single, two RBIs. If she can pull a triple and a home run, she get the cycle. Two outs, though. Base is empty for Franco. She pounded that one, but foul. Strike one. Nice movement on that, but that was low. One ball, one strike with two outs. Franco drives that one on the ground in the center field for a clean single. So Franco is at first base with two outs. <laughs> She's dirty. Ruby now they're starting to they're starting to tip fade a little. Yeah. Brings in the DH Ruby Green, the designated hitter who hasn't hit yet. She's 0 for 4 on the day. That one hits hard. Deep to center field. It's going back. It looks like another off the wall. And oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And she's gonna run back and tag that back That's 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 a bad base running. But the B Wolves put two more on the board. It's now uh, B Wolves ten runs on seventeen hits. Hot corners four runs on seven hits. Dirk Sportswood one for three with a triple and a strikeout. Jeb jumps zero for three and Bo Belter zero for three with a strikeout. Sportswood is tense, but Fitty's one for three with a triple and an RBI today. Bender still in there. He's locked in and fit his size. Uh, his stats are kind of cooled off. He's at 97 pitches. It looks like they might like to give him the rest of the day off. Now All right. So ben, uh, Hurley Bender going to take a seat, and Benson Rushmore is coming in to put a cap on this one. Rushmore with a 6 ERA, a 1.25 whip, 22 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He's got about uh, average velocity, a little less than average junk. His accuracy suffers, but he's fully rested. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. So Rushmore comes in in the eighth inning to face off against Sportswood. Sportswood's first hit is foul for a strike. That was close. Bertha Banks didn't know whether she should try to make a play on it or let it go. That's fouled back, and now Sportswood's in the hole. No balls, two strikes with no outs. Bases loaded, Rushmore delivering his third pitch here. Swing and a miss, and Sportswood goes down on strikes. So one down, two to go. Jed jumps, the second baseman comes in. He's 0 for 3 with an RBI, known as a stealer. Rushmore getting ready to deliver. That's inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes to jumps. That's an for called strike. The count is evened up now. One ball, one strike, one out. Base is empty for Jed jumps. Jed, Jeb jumps. That one's outside as well. Two balls and a strike. Chewing gumbo. <laughs> the best kind of gumbo is the kind that you can chew. There's a smash to Franco. will pick it up. She's going to run over to first base, step on the bag for the second out. And now Bo Belter, the center fielder, is neutral and fit steps in. He's 0 for 3 today. Belter, great contact hitter, great power. Takes the first pitch for a called strike, strike one. Belter can really hurt you if you let him, but Rushmore's composed. That one's high, ball one. One ball, one strike, two outs, nobody on. Bo Belter, the right fielder at the plate. Let's that one go, ball two. Two and one now. Swing and a miss, and Bo Belter wanted to put that one out. That's uh, evens the count up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Rushmore delivers. That's in there for called third strike, and Rushmore comes in and strikes out two of the three bitter, had, uh, batters <laughs> faces. We're heading into the top of the ninth. It's Bertha Banks, one for two, a double and two walks. Steve Monstewer, two for four with a home run and a strikeout. Freddie Knox, one for four. Hayes at 25 pitches with one strikeout. Bertha Banks is locked in and fits. She's one for two with a double, two walks. They've intentionally walked her twice now. We'll see what what they plan to do here. Oh, they're going to pitch to her now. So it's, first one's in there for a cold strike. Strike one. That one's high. Ball one. One ball, one strike. There's a smash, but that's going to get right to Jed. Jumps over at 
second base. He'll throw to Sportswood for the first out. One down. That brings in Steve Monster, two for four with a home run. And single boy Steve is having the game he needed to have today here in St. Louis, Pete. High pitch Ooh. swings it up off the net. Foul. One that got a little eager on that one. That one's outside. Good patience. Ball one. One piece. One out. Oh, it's a little bit low, and he's there. He's now he's looking for those strikes. Inside quarter ball three, very good, very good. Three and one the count. There's the hitter's pitch. Makes it outside oh. quarter strike. Oh, we got a full count. Top of the ninth here. Low into the dirt. The batter walks him. So Freddie Knox now stepping in. He's uh, playing second base. He's one for four with a single and an RBI. Steve Mont Stewart first base with one out. Freddie Knox takes the first pitch outside ball one. One ball, no strikes. Mays, Monzo Hayes is at 36 pitches. That one's outside. Two balls. Hayes tense. There's a smash, and that's going to get into center field for a clean single. James will cut it off and prevent any further advancement by the runners. The runners are first and second now with one out. Billy LeBoink stepping in. Billy LeBoink went for four with another one of those Beagles home runs. And there goes Mazo Hayes. The uh, St. Louis has had enough of him. They're going to be Rachel Rugwerb, the starter slash reliever. Uh, she has got a 4-3-4 ERA, a 1-3-4 whip, 22 strikeouts. She's, she throws the ball hard enough. She doesn't have much movement on it, but she's accurate. Uh, she's well-rested. She throws the four-finger, the two-finger, and she mixes it up with the slider and the change-up. So uh, the pressure up here, we'll get to see what um, Rachel Rhubarb can throw. A weird slide arm delivery. It's kind of hard to read. It makes, the first one makes it in for strike on the count. That one comes across, makes a ball. That's a hard pitch to read from Rhubarb. That makes it in corner strike two. We're at one and two. There's one out in the top of the night. Ten four B-Wolves. That one goes low. Good patience there. And right out of a two apiece. Outside corner swing. Rolling bunt. Swinging bunt. She picks it up just to ten throw out the second out. She advances the runners to second and third. Yes, sir. That is hard to read coming across. Magic where the center fielder steps in. He's two for four today. Got good connection versus left-handed pitcher. Takes the first pitch for called strike. Strike one. Runners at second, third now with two outs. Rolling uh, ground ball to Kasha Emin will pick it up, make the throw to Sportswood for the third out. So we're heading into the bottom of the ninth. B-Wolves, 10 runs on 18 hits. Hot corners, four runs on seven hits. Nora Holmes, Ali Aliyah Price, and Kasha Emin coming up to face off against Benson Rushmore through 12 pitches in this one inning of work. That brings in Nora Holmes, who's yet to get on. She's 0 for 3 of the day. Um, but she's got two, 22 RBIs, so she knows how to hit. Known mostly for a contact, good contact hitter. It's a hard one into the B-Wolves dugout. Look out, coach. <laughs> oh, and won the count. So it's a hard oh, one there no. to the Banks, who dives and just misses it. And that's going to be a clean single in the left field. Biggs picks it in, throws it to Knox. And you got uh, Price at first bait. Or no, I'm sorry, Holmes at first Price now, Elijah Price, one for three with a home run and Harvey I. Pressure up now, the solid rookie for the hot corners. Fans love her. Watch that first one go inside, misses. Ball one, another count. Second one also misses low. 2 0 to Elijah Price. That one's in her wheelhouse, picked up, and Bertha Banks picks it up. She's only going to have time for that one at first, barely makes that one. The runner advances to second base, but got one out now. And that brings in the well-known Kasha Emin, who's two for three. The runner at second base, so Kasha could do damage. Watches it for the oh. breaking pitch, misses low. One out of the count to Emin. That one misses high ball, two in a similar situation. Last batter he was ahead to before he threw his first strike. Oh, come on. The ball there, misses a little bit. Now it's three and oh. That breaking pitch makes it in there for a strike. Hitter's pitch. Gosh, Emin, 3 1. Outside corner walks in. Jesus. Five pitches. You can bring in the closer if you want. Tiny DeGrand comes up. DeGrande, 1 for 2. I've been pronouncing it. They're going to sit him. Oh, I'm sorry. They're taking out the shortstop, Nora Holmes, for some reason. They'll give a pinch runner. That's what they're doing. Yeah, Nora Holmes is not that fast, so they're going to have give her a seat. They're going to bring in Seymour Sox, who normally plays right field. He's coming in just to run. He's fast. So, you got two quick runners. At first and second, the pressure up here, and it does look like they're gonna they're gonna give the hand the towel to Vance or Rushmore. They're gonna go with Smack Avery. They need just two more outs. Smack Avery, the Southern gentleman, closing pitcher. He's got a 3.86 ERA, 107 WHIP, and three Ks. He's looking for his first. Uh, he's looking for a first save in a while. He throws the ball hard, 
And uh, he's well rested. He throws that four figure and he mixes it up with a curveball. So we'll see if Avery can put him away as he's paid to do. And has done so well over seasons with it. Breaking pitch hits a foul. Does Tiny De Grande. Ball on the count. Hard hit to Bertha Banks. Who throws over to second to try and get that runner. And they got two outs. Line drive catch there. And that brings up Geronimo James. Who's tense. One for three. Wouldn't be surprised if we see the trade. And that's where he is. They're going to pull James. They need that offense. They're going to bring in Raymond, Ramus Forrest, who also plays right field. But he's also tense. But he has a lot more power than James, so he's going to come in and hope to do that. He's hitting 272 with three home runs and 12 RBIs in the season. With the pressure up here, one more out. Check swing strike one up in the hands. Oh, one on the count. It's Matt Gabriel's going right at him. Swing and miss strike two. Well, one strike away from ending this game. There's a breaking pitch outside corner. Haley Dexterous reaches behind the back for the grab. <laughs> and the P Wolves win it in huge fashion. P wow, P that was pent up. That was, yeah. That I, I can't. I mean, like I say, the the home runs have been few and far between. Um, and and we saw a home run derby that today, but it looked like they got their finally got their stroke back, and they were able to time it out right. And uh, yeah, I mean, jeez. Yeah. Wow. What a what a day here in St. What a way to end the road trip. The uh, hot corner score first, two in the first, and another in the second. We're thinking, here we go again. You know, the same old, yeah. same old. We will start yeah. to claw back. We've seen that before. Even when they get two in the third and the fourth, we weren't too too excited. But when we get that home run, that Steve Monster home run in the sixth to put them ahead, things started to feel a little bit different. They follow that with a four-run seventh inning, which really, really cemented things. Uh, the hot corner's got one. But uh, you could tell they weren't in it. Beavles get two more in the eighth. And they ended 10 runs on 18 hits to the hot corners, four on eight. A real solid performance there. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. How many home runs did they hit? Five. Five home runs today. Dex. Uh, Dexterous with two. Yeah. <laughs> two of them. Four for five with two home runs. Yep. Although they Scored were solos is the only problem. Because he's up early, you know. But yeah, yeah. But a lot of yeah. I mean, then you got Buster Biggs comes up too. Buster Biggs has done well. He gets a home run. Steve Bond Story gets a timely one that switches from takes him from behind to ahead. Yep. Solid. Everyone hit. Straight. They did. Everybody hit. We like to see that. Uh, Ruby Green one for five. Although I think she she had a couple of. Uh, no, she didn't have any. Okay. I thought she had a couple on an RBI or so. Bertha Banks won for three, but she walked twice, so she got on base at least twice. Um, Monstour, two for four. He wa he also walked once, so he was on base at least three times, you know. Yeah. Le LeBoink only goes one for five, but that one's a home run. <laughs> yeah. So. Which is rare for him. He doesn't typically hit the home runs. Follow with the only home run that the hot corners hit, and obviously she's... You know, like you pointed out, she's having a heck of a rookie career. <laughs> um, B Wolves rack up eight strikeouts on the day, so only walked two, gave uh, four RBIs, one home run, only gave up eight hits. So you know, the the three pitchers, uh, Bender, Rushmore, and uh, Avery, combined for an eight eight hitter. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, Bender gets the win. He goes seven innings, gives, gives up uh, seven hits, four earned runs. Uh, walks one, strikes out six, which was good. Gave it the one homer. Like I said, he's four, eight, and one on the season. Gets that win, puts him back in the win column. He's now four and three. He's relieved by Benson Rushworth. There's one in the third. Pitches okay. Gives up one hit. Walks a batter. Gets two Ks. Uh, his ERA sits at a five, six, eight. And he's a one and one on the season. And they bring in Smack Avery for the close. Uh, but they never lost the win. So. Uh, they didn't get the win when he brought him in, so he threw two thirds of an inning. His ERA sits at 3.60, which is really good, and he's 1 1 4. Yep, and then over there for the uh, Hot Corners, Trock Smith started the game, pitched five and two thirds, and actually for a tense pitcher, didn't look too bad for a while. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he gave up seven hits, three earned runs, I had a walk, gave up a walk, and had two strikeouts. He did give up one home run. He leaves with a 5.23 ERA and an 0 and 2. Uh, his record remains 0 and 2. Joseph Brosif comes in, gets the loss. He gave, pitched a third of an inning, gave up four hits, three earned runs, and two home runs. His ERA goes drops to a 4.25, and his record uh, falls to three wins, three losses, 
three saves. Al- Almanzo Hayes came in. He pitched two and a third, gave up, uh, pit, gave up seven hits, four earned runs. Um, he walked two, had one strikeout, gave up two home runs himself. His ERA drops to 5.15, and his record remains one win, one loss, two saves. And then Rubard came in, pitched two-thirds of an inning, didn't, didn't give up anything. His ERA remains at 4.26, and his record remains at one win, five losses, Tom, and two saves. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, and then the three stars of the game. There you go. And the first star, Hanley Dexteris, superstar shortstop. He goes four for five. He hits two home runs, two doubles, and two RBIs. What a, what a day for Dex. Steve Bonstor follows him up, the B-ranked catcher, number 48. He has a solid day like he like he needed to. He went two for four, got a home run, three RBIs, and a run, scores by himself. Yeah, he's been dragging a bit, so finally get that monkey off his yeah. back. The third star of the game is the A-minus, Laura Franco, the first baseman. She had went three for five. She had a double, two RBIs, scored two runs, and she stole the base. So, well... Well done, Alora. That's just going to help her. She's already locked in. So, uh, Tommy G with seven hits, one home run, two RBIs, a great catch, one stolen base, three strikeouts for a contribution of 39%. Pete J with 11 hits, four home runs, eight RBIs, one great catch, and five strikeouts. Although I got thrown out twice trying to steal. So, I don't know what my problem is with stealing, but I don't seem to be able to do it. So, contribution 61%. Well, I mean, I, like I'm looking at mine, thinking that's a good day. Seven hits, a home run, two. Yeah, but but you did so much better that I only got like forty yeah. percent. But see, that's the thing is, it's like you go fifty-two, and I, I couldn't hit the I couldn't hit the ball over the wall to save my life. Yeah, you know what I mean. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and then we drop it one point, and all of a sudden I'm back to hitting, you know, hitting home runs again, and then. I'm timing them out right, and I don't, I don't get it. I yeah. don't get it. Yeah. Well, wow, what a what a good what a good game. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this back. To, we're gonna have another game straight away tomorrow. We fly back to Phoenix and um, and take on the the super hot league leading wild New York Wild Pigs. So that'll be, yeah. that'll be a test. And in fact, we're about to get uh, the score in from the Pigs Platypi game. Beat the Pigs were out in San Diego. Playing a playoff, you want to tell us how that one ended? Sure, sure. That's a battle of the division, and the Platypi are out early, but the Wild Pigs roar back, but the Platypi eke it out six five. Ah, keeping it, keeping it real there. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. So as you can see, the um, the New York Wild Pigs are the tie. I guess they're they have the they're tied for the best percentage with two other teams. The sirloins and the uh, and the crocodons. They have the most wins. They're the winningest team, and they have the highest run differential. Yeah, plus seventy-two. Oof. Yeah. So just when the B wolves, you know, make it to uh, five hundred, back to five hundred, and they're trying to get in, and they got to play the hottest team in the league. We're going to be going up. Uh, Ortiz going to be facing West Yogurt, Spanky Wagner, Jamie O'Connor. Jamie O'Connor, who played for the Arctics. What a change for him. Ugh. Yeah. And Hardiman, and if you look, all three of those guys are locked in. Yeah. <laughs> locked <laughs> in. I know. Although, although look, Alora, Franco, Dexterous, and Banks, they're all locked in, too. There you go. This is, this be, I think, uh, don't count us out. Looking at the schedule, no, we could see the finish line. This, this is going to be a good game, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so Bender is going to get two more. He's going to play again against the Water Bullets uh, on the road, then and he's going to end the season against the Platypi. Yeah, so we we finally come home for one, play one at Red Rock Park. It'll be good to be home, uh, and then we get get on the plane to head back out again. We get to Colorado, Oakland, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, what a what a nightmare like flight schedule. <laughs> you go from from Colorado to Oakland. Over to Florida, up to Seattle, before coming back to Phoenix. Oh. Yuck. Well, that's the thing is we got the Wild Pigs, Buzzards, and Outlaws, and then we got four against our own division. Yeah. And I think that that game against the Herbisaurs is looming kind of large because if we can continue to win, I mean, that may be 
I mean, the water bullets and herbosaurs, actually, both of those. Look at that. Yeah, you go water bullets, herbosaurs, and then two sirloins. Yeah. That's... But, I mean, the water bullets and the herbosaurs are going to be the ones that may be in front of us right. for the wild card. So right. we can we can make big territory if we win those games. Yeah. I like Bender throwing against, against the bullets. It's... Ooh, Hanley Dexteris has catapulted himself to number four in the top ten players in the current season. Oh, wow. Number four overall? Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, 368 batting average, 694 slugging percentage, 1.115 on base percentage, 11 home runs, 24 RBIs, 13 walks, 7 stolen bases. Wow. That's pretty good. Wait a second. And look, I was just about to go to the to the news here. Ansel Caruso got, looks like he got let go. So yeah. So I'm going to go to player development and scroll down. Oh, yeah. So, for, all right. First thing is uh, player development. He got available beefcake powder for Benson Rushmore with 25. New training opportunities available for him for $869,000. Well, he um, may be able to afford that, actually. Yeah. He can add one to his power, eight to his velocity. He would lose four on his accuracy. Um, but a 15% chance to get the K-Man, so something we can consider. Yes, sir. So what's going on above that? The wide load sign, uh, Santiago Smile, replacing Ellis Locos. Oh, Ellis Locos. Ellis Locos, a B-plus uh, right fielder, outfielder, 30-year-old. He's got 69 power, 52 connectivity, and 72 speed. So he's a kind of a speedster. He's a good fielder with a strong arm. He's got good connection versus right-handed pitching. They bring in San Diego Smile, who's an overall C-plus left fielder, outfielder. He's 39 years old. He's got less power, less contact, um, less speed. He's not as good a fielder, and he does not have that strong arm. But, uh, you know, Ellis Locos making $10,200,000 a year, as opposed to Santiago Smiles, $2,600,000, Tom. And I think that's got more to do with it than anything else. Yeah. Jeez, I was going to say real quick, uh, you know, off season comes around, uh, uh, Ellis Locos is someone to keep an eye on if, if Billy LeBoyk decides to hang up the cleats. At 30 years old, though. He's nine years younger than Billy LeBoyk. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, anyway. But they got Ansel Caruso out there. Yeah, so the next one is the Hot Corners signed Chance Lauterberry, Pete. Chance Lauterberry, the lowest ranked player available. In replacing league Ansel Cruz, the one of the top ranked players in the entire league. Uh, Ansel Cruz having the season career season. Again, he started for the for the um, Nemesis last year. Then he plays the hot corners. He's ranked he was ranked third overall when we started this game. He's a B plus. Uh, yeah, he's the only thing is that uh, um, Chance Lauterberry is a better hitter. <laughs> the 28-year-old starting pitcher gets let go, making $9.1 million a year. They pick up the E-plus ranked um, Chance Lauterberry, who can barely throw the ball fast at all, no movement. He's fairly accurate. He's a specialist. Uh, he's only making 300000 a year, Pete. I'm making more Yeah, years. <laughs> Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> But they didn't stop there. Kasha Emmon has offended a hot corners coach, Tom, and was replaced by Wiggles Freeman. Boy, we, we left some ripples. We, we did. That, that's, that I think that was probably the nail in the coffin, that, that huge upset there. Kasha Emmon offended a hot corners coach. Emmon, the A-minus, uh, 29-year-old shortstop second baseman. Uh, great power, uh, great connectivity. Great speed on the base pass. She's a great fielder with a with about a, a little bit better than average arm. They pick up Wiggles Freeman is a 29 year old shortstop third baseman. Um, doesn't have much power. Uh, makes about average contact, but he doesn't have a lot of speed on the base pass. He's a he's a pretty good. I mean, he's an average fielder with an average arm. But again, you're talking. I mean, wow. I, how did they pick these guys up? That's you're looking at nineteen million four hundred thousand dollars in just Ansel Caruso and Kasha Emmett. Yeah, they're really setting themselves up for the off season, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Kasha Emmett making ten million three hundred thousand, and uh, Wiggles Freeman only slated to make one million eight hundred thousand to finish out the season. So. Well, it'll be nice to see Emmett land somewhere solid. I mean, she played so many years for the Overdogs, and now and then she goes to the hot quarters. So it would be great to see her make it, you know, with the playoff team. 
Although the dogs were in the playoffs last time she was on them. Right. Well, they've slipped. They've let they've let quite a few good players go, and and they they don't look like they're making the playoffs this season either. Yeah. Let's see if we yeah. look, look at player development. Yeah, right now we only have one option for player development as far as de actually developing Buster Biggs Biosource membership. Uh, we'd add one to his power, eight to his fielding, and take two off his arm. But I don't know. The 25% chance they had 16 to his fielding, but. Yeah, the problem, I, though, I mean, I think we had an issue in this game against the Hot Corners where he missed a ball that got past him. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, I haven't really had problems with his fielding. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that, you know, it wouldn't be good to, to get it better, but you're going to lose two on his arm, which is already kind of below average anyway, so... I don't know yeah. if I'm interested in that. Yeah, and you could do we could end up doing the um, you know Benson Rushmore thing in two games, or no, in one game. The next game we do the beefcake powder, where you got Deshaun Levon, his thing, or um, or Tats Belfour's in two games. So yeah, let's leave those alone. Okay. Yeah, and the Hurley Bender's also got beefcake powder. Did you see that? Yeah, it just as can't afford. Like, it doesn't even say can afford in such and such many games because it's over $2 million. It's just the yeah. Game, no, no, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, all right, well, all right, cool. We'll end it from there. Then we got to go hop on a flight, get out of here, get back to Phoenix so we can yes, sir. clean up and host those uh, wild pigs tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, great, great win here to end off uh, an awful road trip and still leave a, a flicker of a chance to make the wild card race we'll have to see how things go here but they have to keep pedal on the on the floor pete that's it there's there's only one one game plan and only one game plan and only one game plan and that's win that's the only thing you can do there's no machination there's no this that or the other things you just got to keep winning and that's how you keep the pressure on those uh, the teams in front of you all right well we'll do that then so until then we will see you back in phoenix this is tommy g and this is Pete J, and we're saying, get out of here.